So we're, we're entering uh, our statistics chapter. Um, it's a very brief chapter. There's only four lessons. And in those four lessons, we're going we're gonna to just kind of uh, scratch the surface. Because if you guys remember me talking about statistics in the past, statistics, uh, there's entire courses on like, Like not just a chapter. There's an entire book on statistics. So we're just going to talk about some of the most basic stuff and, and how to like read and interpret some of these statistics. Because you have to be real careful whenever you um, look at statistics because they can be manipulated. Um, but the overall gist of what statistics is all about is just uh, the practice of science of collecting and analyzing data. Now, if you guys think about it, like anytime you ever like, I don't know, I don't know if anyone even does this anymore because of social media, but if you watch the news, I always give like these percentages of people's opinions. And I've been alive for 37 years now, and no one has ever asked me my opinion, like for these surveys. Well, the thing is, um, the way statistics works is it's not really practical to ask every single person when you're trying to find out someone's opinion. So what you have to do is you have to take a sample. I mean, think about the word sample. Don't they have that like at, uh, what's that place in the mall where they put the little piece of chicken on a toothpick? Okay, Costco is inside the mall. I haven't been to a mall in a while, but maybe, yeah, it is It is like a Costco, right? They give you a sample, it's like a small piece, and that's what the whole box is supposed to taste like. Well, that's exactly what they do in statistics. They, instead of asking every single person, they try to grab a random sample, which is a smaller subgroup, to represent the opinion of the entire group. Now, um, before we get into like random samples and all that stuff, we're going to talk about some of the, the ways that they use averages in statistics. So there's two types of, uh, there's two different types of ways. Well, there's a few different ways of using one number to represent the whole group. Um, one of them is called the mean. This one is the one that's most often referred to as the average. So to calculate an average, you have to add up all of the numbers, and then you have to divide by how many numbers were in the list. The other one that's very common is the median. Now, when you guys, uh, when you interpret statistics, there's some things that you should think about because some of the numbers could be misleading. So the median is another way of using one number to represent a whole group of numbers, but that median is found by putting the numbers in order and then finding the number that's in the center of those, so like in the middle, basically. Um, if you put them in order and there's, you know, you cross them out from the ends trying to work your way to the middle, if there's two numbers left over in the middle, then you would probably... Well, you would probably, you would have to add them up and divide them by two. Now, I was talking about how, like, sometimes one measure is better than the other. For example, in this class, if we talked about the average age of the people that are in this class right now, one of these is better than the other. Now, if you had to guess, what do you guys think around the, the average age of this class is? Probably say 16, right? Well, if we actually calculate it, it would probably come out to like 18 or 19. So using the mean, add up all of the ages of the people in the room, and then divide it by how many people are in the room. Now, 18 or 19 is not a good guess for me, though. Like, I, I don't think that's very accurate for you guys. So a way to get a better measurement is actually by the median. Now, think about this. You guys told me that the age should be around 16, maybe 17. But I'm telling you, it's probably like 18 or 19. Do you know why? Uh, yeah, it's because I'm here. I'm an outlier. My age is nowhere close to where you guys are, so when you have numbers that are far away from what the number should be, it pulls it in that direction. So I messed everything up. So that's why we have to have these different ways of measuring and finding one number to represent the whole group. So a better way to do it is to find the median age of the classroom. Because like you guys said, shouldn't there be a bunch of 16s and 17s? And if I put them in order and I start crossing them out from the extremes, I'm the first one that's out if I was to calculate the median. So in that scenario, the median is the better one to do. So what I'm going to have you guys do, I'm going to pause for a second because this is calculator work now. I want you to find the median and, and the uh, mean for each set for the problem one and problem two. While you guys are typing in the calculator, I'm going to start to put the numbers in order so we can find the, the median. Okay, my calculator people. 
You guys add it up? Add it up and divide it by 10. What'd you get? A what? 11.1. Okay. And it's okay to get decimals. Now for the median, the median we have to do sort of a little work. We had to put them in order first. And we eliminate the extremes. So we work from the outside in. We go like this, keep crossing them out until we get to the center. Now in the event that there's two numbers in the center, we have to add them up and just divide them by two. So basically we take the average of the last two. So if I add 15 and 15 and then divide it by two, the answer is still 15. So our median would be 15. Uh, number two. Well, actually we'll do the median first. No, not the median, the mean. What do you guys get when you added them up and divided them? Did anyone add them up and divide them yet? Yeah, for number two. 5.09. I'm going to say 5.09, so I'll put 5.1. They're going to round it to nearest tenth. And then for the median, the number in the middle, Cross them out, start from the outside, work your way in. So we end up with five. Now I also want to say some stuff about um, how throwing an extra number in could affect these things. When you're doing the mean, if you throw an extra number in, your mean is going to change. Now the only way it wouldn't change is if the, the number you threw in was the exact same number as the mean. But if you throw in a number that's higher than the average, then your average goes up. If you throw in a number lower than your average, then the average goes down. So I think that's pretty straightforward. Now, for the median, if I was to throw in an extra number, it depends on where that number ends up. Because, like, if you look at um, number, number one, for example, when they're in order, there's a few 15s in the middle already. So it doesn't really matter which side you throw the extra number on because you're probably going to end up with a 15 in the middle no matter where you put it. But it all just depends on how the numbers work out once you throw the extra number in and recross them out from the outside in. Okay, the last one, the last one and the, the one that's probably used the least is the mode. The only time the mode is ever used is when people are trying to find like the most popular or something. So we look at the numbers and whichever one repeats the most, that's the mode. So the definition of the mode is the number that appears the most often. Now, if you notice, there's more than one set of numbers that repeats here. But the answer for the mode is actually the one that repeats the most. So even though there's three ones and there's two threes and two fours, the ones wins. So the mode of this would be the ones. Now, you could also have more than one answer, though. If there was an extra three in there, it would have been a two-way tie. So we would have had two modes, one and three. Um, the opposite is also true. If you didn't have any numbers repeat, well, then there would be no mode. So there's different scenarios that could happen. You either have one mode, multiple modes, or no modes, depending on how, how many numbers repeat. OK, now the next page about data collection. So one of the things you're going to have to do is we're going to give you a scenario, and then you just have to determine how the data is collected. It's going to say, was this an example of a survey, an observational study, or an experimental study? Now, I gave you the keys, and I don't have very many examples here because, like, I think there's things within each scenario that makes it pretty straightforward. So first of all, the three main, because there's more than just these three, but these are the main ones that we're going to be talking about for a survey. A survey is when you ask someone a question. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. If you think of a survey, you probably think of like a form that someone fills out. It doesn't have to be a form. It could be just um, oral. Like I could just ask people the question. There's also the observational one. It's exactly what it sounds like. Observation. All you do is watch. So you watch and you measure and, and you don't, um, you make sure that you do it in a way that doesn't impact your study. And then the last one is uh, the experimental. That's the one where you do an actual experiment. It involves trials, it involves control groups, and then the, um, when you do your experiment, then you have all of your measurement that, that you need from the actual study. 
So let me talk real quick about what a control group is. When you guys, um, when, you, when you participate in a true experiment, there is a control group. And they're called the control group because you're controlling something about one of the variables. So you compare that to the one where you didn't control the variable, and that's how you determine whether or not you're getting the results you needed to see from your experiment. Um, one example of that is when they test medicine. Sometimes, like let's just take Tylenol for example. And I just threw that out there. I'm not getting paid by Tylenol to say that. Um, sometimes when they test in medicine, they take a big group and they, they divide them into two groups. One group gets the actual medicine and one group gets the fake medicine. All they are are salt, salt tablets. And so what happens is they ask the group that took the medicine, how did you feel after you took the medicine? But then the, the, the group that they gave the fake medicine to, it's pretty interesting because um, they, it's, it's called the placebo effect. Because they think they're taking the medicine, they actually feel better too. But that's kind of cool. But that, that's what a control group is. It's when you break the group into different groups and then control something about one of the groups. Now, when you guys are doing, um, when you're collecting your data, it's very important that you're, be, you, you're very careful on how you collect the data. Earlier today, well, just a few seconds ago, I talked about the survey, how sometimes you know, you can take the survey in the form of a paper, or I could just ask you. You have to be real careful with that because if it's something that's very sensitive and I'm asking you and you don't, you're, you're not able to be like anonymous anymore, you might not answer truthfully. So that could impact your study. And that's an example of a bias sample. So a bias sample, the way I think of it, is kind of like a bad question. When, when you can almost guess what they're going to answer or you're influenced by how the question is being asked, that's bias. For example, let's say I want to figure out um, how many people eat cookies. And I ask you, um, how many of you eat cookies? No, actually, I'm going to change how I'm going to word it. I'm going to, I'm going to make it so it's biased. I'm going to make it so it's bad. What if the survey said, do you eat cookies even though they're unhealthy? You see how that's a bad question? You're going to make you feel all sad and make you want to say, no, I don't eat cookies. You try to lie. That's a bad example. That's a bad Bias sample. Another example. Let's say, um, let's say I wanted to figure out someone's favorite sport. So I go and stand outside of the University of Phoenix Stadium where the Cardinals play, and I go and ask the people that are leaving the stadium after the Cardinals game. Why is that bad? Yeah, they just left the football game. If you're at a football game, football is probably going to be their answer, like nine times out of ten. So depending on how you ask the question, or depending on who you ask, or depending on where you ask, if it has any influence on the answer, then that's biased. Now the way to keep this fair and to make it not biased is to make sure that it's random. So when you're uh, investigating a certain population, you have to make sure that every single person in that population has an equal chance of being selected. So there's a couple of questions here. We're going to go through and then you're going to start practicing and answering these questions on your own. I just want to know, is this random or is this biased? I want to take a survey of students using calculators. So I want to know about students using calculators. So I ask Ms. Runger's calculus class. Why? Yeah, if they're in a calculus class, they're probably using calculators like crazy in there, right? So that's biased. Okay, next, surveying students in third hour classes regarding the, effic the efficiency of the school marquee. Is that bias or is that random? The school marquee is the sign with the lights in the front of the school. It says all the, you know, no school Monday, that's the sign of the front door. Yeah, it's random. Who's in the third hour? Anybody could be in the third hour. Boy, girl, freshman, through senior, everyone. Everyone's in the third hour. So that's random. <laughs> Do you support the I totally stole these notes from another teacher. Do you support the great job Mr. Parr is doing? Why? Why? Mr. Parr doesn't do a good job, right? <laughs> no, right here. This is influencing the question. <laughs> It's trying to lead you to answer it a certain way. And I didn't write the question, by the way. Bias? B, 
Do you support the rule that student government plays at GHS? Um, yeah, it's random. You've got, so you got to think of who your population is. The population is GHS, right? And you're asking um, about, or if you support the role of the student government, the student government is a representation of the entire campus. It's got freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors, boys and girls. So everyone is represented in there. And so this is a random sample. And that's it. So that's your, that's your first case of, of um, statistics. So on the assignment, you're going to have to calculate the mean, median, and mode just on like three or four questions. And then the rest of them are scenarios. You got to tell me if it's biased. You got to tell me if it's uh, experimental, observational, uh, or a survey. And then you have to go through and look at a couple of different, like multiple choice scenarios where you have to decide which one is biased, which one is unbiased, and so on. So that's where I'm going to stop so you can start practicing. And I'll hand out the packs right now.